Okay, so welcome folks. And I thought we'd do something a little bit different in today's webinar and actually focus on some little ticks and, um, tips and tricks um, and things that you can do in, in your daily practice. Uh, some things we're going to look at are just uh, really simple nifty ways that the software can help you to work better with you know, cases analysis that you're doing. And we'll also look at some ways which are you know, really count as homeopathic cheating, um, but hopefully we'll give you some nice simple things that you can do in your practice to find really uh, simple solutions to some of the common questions that we get every day. Uh, so we're really going to focus on things today that are uh, a bit past the basic moving around, but just in case anyone is here who's new, let's start with a very quick tour of the program. There's a couple of things I want to review just to make sure they're fresh in your mind for what we're going to do next. Uh, what you're seeing on the screen at the moment is a layout you see when you first open the program. So you'll see over on the left hand side we have our table of contents. This is where you can find all the books or access the, the items that you want to work with. And we actually have five table of contents. At the moment you're seeing the repertory table of contents which I can access by clicking on my repertories button. There's also a references table of contents where I've got all my mature medicas, my provings, my journals, my um, seminar notes, a whole range of philosophic, uh, philosophical documents, a whole range of uh, non repertory really homeopathic information that's out there. I have a table of contents for my patients and we're recording all my patient details, one for my remedies and one for the families or the kingdoms and groups of information. So you can move back and forth between them just by clicking on this button across the top here and choosing which table of contents you want to go into. And of course from this table of contents clicking on the book will open it up. So for example if I clicked on the Synthesis Treasure Edition it would open that repertory up and you'll see on my right hand side in the display window I've actually got that repertory open already because that's my default repertory. It's always open when I first open the program. The way that the program works is it will always open, when you open it up it will always open ready for you the books you had open last time you used the program unless you set up something different of course you can customize it to open a specific example of books or selection of your favorites all those kind of things but the general default is it will open what you what you had open last time you used the program which for me you know, synthesis treasure edition and vermilion's concordant material medica is probably my you know, my two most used books uh, so i always have them as the first ones open when i'm in the program i just want to review quickly moving around a little bit so you'll see i'm in the repertory at the moment but actually you can move around the exact same way in the repertory as what you do in the Mature Medica. It works the same for both of them. So we'll start by looking at the repertory. So we're going to look at there's several different ways of moving around. Of course some people are mouse people, some people are keyboard people. So there's a range of options there depending on how you like to move around. Let's look at a mouse way to do it first and you'll see in the repertory here, it looks much the same as a regular repertory, in my top corner I've got this binoculars button. So I'm going to click on that binoculars button with my mouse. And you can see this brings up the navigation window. This is where I can see all the chapters uh, of the current document I'm in. In this case, it's the repertory that I'm in. So I see here all the, all the chapters in synthesis repertory. If I want to go into one of those chapters, I can just click it with my mouse. So if I click on the mind chapter, my first one here, for example, this brings up a list for me with all the sections of the mind chapter. If I want to go to the, the fear section, I just start um, scrolling until I find the word fear, or I can type the word fear. So if I do it now using my keyboard, I'll push the letter F. And you see up the top, letter F appears, just up here. And it's limited to my list to all the words that, that start with letter F. And I can keep typing an E, an A. And so it will reduce and reduce the list of options there until I can see the ones that I want. I've got you know, three options so far, fear, fearless, and feasting that I'll start with an F, E, A. So using my mouse, I could click on the word fear, or I could just push enter on my keyboard. Both will do the same thing. And this goes into the mind fear section. So you can see in the header here, mind fear. And these are all the sub rubrics, all the things that you can be afraid of. So if I want to look for a rubric, say, fear of ghosts, I can just start typing the word ghosts, G-H-O, here it is here, mind fear ghosts of. And you'll see next to it, there's this little plus sign. Right? This plus indicates there's actually more sub rubrics, more levels below that. So if I click on the word ghosts or I push the enter with my keyboard, you'll see up in my header, mind fear ghosts of. And here's all the possible sub-rubrics, fear of ghosts in the evening, at night, thinks he's conversing with them in the dark, sleeplessness with or waking on. And in brackets afterwards you see a number telling you how many medicines are in that rubric. But what I want to draw your attention to is so that where, where we are at the moment, we're looking at the rubric Mind Fear Go Solve, and the program is proposing there's more sub-rubrics here. So from here I've got a couple of things I can do. I could go back to the repertory, either by simply pushing the enter button on my keyboard again, or using my mouse by pushing the go to button down the bottom. And the rubric here it's actually going to go to is that rubric mind fear ghosts of. So I push the button here, so it takes me to the repertory, 
animate that rubric, mind, fear, ghost of. So I'm still seeing that same rubric my header was identifying, and I can see below here there's subrubrics if I'm interested in them. I'm going to go back to that navigation window um, for the moment. I'm going to do that by uh, a keyboard shortcut pushing the F3 button. Um, don't worry about that, we'll come back to that idea shortly. What I want, other thing I want to draw your attention to is that I could have just taken the rubric direct from this window. You've got two options here. You can just exist in this navigation window and take your rubrics direct from this navigation window, pop them in a clipboard to use them for later, or you can go from this navigation window back to the repertory itself and move back and forth between them. So for me, you know, I often like to go back to the repertory itself. I like to look at a rubric, have a, have a look at the kind of medicines in there, have a think about it, decide if I want to use it or not. Other people will say they don't want to go back to the repertory, they don't want to see the medicines there because they don't want to bias themselves into choosing a rubric based on which medicines in it, which of course is, is valid as well. So some people like to just stay in this, this, this navigation window here. So to make that possible for you, there's a few options here, but one is down the bottom there's a take button. So this take button will actually take the rubric you're looking at at the moment and pop it in your clipboard. And the rubric it's going to take is not going to be one of these sub-rubrics, it's going to be this rubric that's in the header. So whatever's in the header here will be the rubric that gets taken, because this is what the one that the program's actually looking at at the moment. It's like the program saying, this is the rubric we're looking at, mind, fear, go solve, but also it's proposing, you know, there's several other options of sub-rubrics below there. So if I push on the take button, you see a little number one appears below my first clipboard. If I go to it, so I'll get this out of the way, you can see it's taken that rubric, mind, fear, ghosts of. Mind, fear, ghosts of, here's the sub-rubrics. You could move down, use your arrows, use your keyboards, etc. to look at sub-rubrics, but it's still going to take this top rubric. It's always going to take the one that you're pointing at at the moment. Um, so that, that's that main rubric up there. So I'll close that one down, cancel that. So let's just do that quickly once again just for the, um, the mouse people. So I'm going to look at the rubric, say, uh, back pain in the morning. So I'm going to click on my binoculars. I can go to my back chapter either by clicking on it or by typing its name. I'm going to go to the pain section and by scrolling and clicking or by typing it. Enter or click. Warning. Enter or click. I've got this rubric up here. I can either push go to to go to the repertory or I can just push take. And if I push take, it pops it in my clipboard just like that. Okay. Once I'm inside the repertory itself, if I want to go back to where I was before, the mouse way you could do it is by clicking on the header. So across here where the header is, say mind fear goes off. If I want to go back to say at the level fear, if I click on that, it'll bring up my navigation window, take me to the mind fear section and I can pick more subsections below here. And there's a range of ways you can customise this to work the way that, that uh, you want it to work really. But that's the basic idea of moving around navigating in that area. Uh, the reason why I want to review that is just to show you you can do the exact same thing in the repertory, in, sorry not the repertories, in Materia Medicus or in you know, any other document. So here for example, I've gone to the tab for Vermeulen's Concordant Materia Medica. I've got these same buttons up the top, binoculars. If I click on this, brings up all the sections of Vermeulen's Concordant Materia Medica. I can see here's the preface to the second edition, here's the structure, the codes, summary, the conclusion, the Materia Medica section. If I click on the Materia Medica section, it brings up a list of all the Materia Medica, so all the medicines which are in this section. So if I wanted to go to Pulsatilla, for example, I can type Pulse, Enter. Here I'm in the Pulsatilla section, and I have all the subsections, all the chapters. You know, if I'm specifically looking for the urinary chapter, you know, I could just click it and it brings it through to me here. And again, you know, I could go to, to actually read it in the document if I want to. So navigating around those books, you can do it the same way with a book as what you would do it with a repertory document. So the, uh, let's go back to the repertory again and I'll just show you some other ways to browse around. Other ways you can do it, of course, is with a keyboard. You know, so with the keyboard, I could just start typing where I want to go to. So I'm currently in the, in the mind fear section. If I want to go to, say, mind anxiety, if I push the letter M on my keyboard, up comes my navigation window again, proposing chapters. I'll pick the mind again. And I'm going to go to the anxiety section by typing anxiety. So I've done the exact same thing, but rather than pushing that binoculars button to bring up a visual list of chapters, I just start typing the name of the chapter I want to go to. If you want, you can actually customise that if you prefer to always stay inside the same chapter and you know, typing, just start searching inside the current chapter, you've got that option as well. You can customise that in the settings. Uh, so that's a personal preference. You can choose which way you'd like for that one to work. Uh, let's go to that rubric. So I'll go to mind, anxiety, and let's go in the morning. So I'll move to that rubric. So again, once you're in the repertory, you could take this rubric into clipboard, 
Again, you've got the exact same take button. I could just click the take button. Uh, or if you're a real keyboard person, you only want to use a keyboard, you could type the plus sign on your keyboard. And if you type the plus sign, up will pop this little take rubric window and you can just click enter or OK, and um, sorry, enter or take, I'm sorry, and that will take that rubric in your clipboard in the exact same way. I'm just going to cancel out of that because of course we've taken that rubric already. OK, so let's move on to the new things. I want to show you some, some new tips and some new tricks for working with information in a little bit different way as you move around the repertory uh, and I suppose with the Mature Medica also. So the first thing I want to draw your attention to is working with the cross-references. Uh, so let's look at the rubric, say, uh, for Mind Fear at night time. So to navigate to that, I could either click my binoculars button to bring up my chapters. I could just start typing the word Mind or if I change my setting, I could type the word Fear. Um, or I could even click on the header up here. I click on mind, it brings me up and takes me into the mind section. So I'm going to go to fear, F-E-A-R, click enter to go into the fear section. So you can see now in the header, mind fear, and I'm going to look at night time, N-I-G-H on my keyboard, enter. So here's that, that uh, header, the rubric is mind fear night, subrubrics if I want them. I don't want them, I'm going to go back to my repertory, so I'm going to click enter again or push the go to button with my mouse. And so here I am in the repertory, I'm looking at the rubric Mind Fear Night, I can see it in my header here, Mind Fear Night, here's the rubric. But the interesting thing I want to draw your attention to is there's some cross references below here. I've also got Anxiety at Night, Anxiety at Night in Children, Darkness Aggravates or Terror at Night Time. So these are cross references referring you to go look at a different place in the repertory. So if I click on them, it's going to actually take me to that different place in the repertory. So I could go look at Anxiety at Night, if I click on this, so you can see it's taken me straight through. Now I'm at the Mind Anxiety Night section. Here's my Anxiety Night Medicines. There's actually quite a lot more Anxious at Night Medicines than there were Fear at Night Medicines. And again, below that, there's more cross-references referring me back to Fear at Night. You know, I could go back to where I was before uh, by clicking the Fear at Night just below there. Yep. So here I am back at the rubric Mind Fear Night with its cross-references. So often when you look at a section like this, you may think, actually, there's several of those rubrics that I want to use. You know, maybe this is quite generic, Fear at Night, you know, 87 medicines, Anxiety at Night had quite a bit more than that. Maybe I want to have both of those lots of medicines. You know, I want to take both of those rubrics and pop them in my clipboard. And there's a couple of ways you can do that. Of course, you could use those, those rubrics, jump back and forth between them and drag and drop them, pop them in the clipboard, same as you normally would. But something that's often really useful to do is actually to take them together. Um, so yeah, in a way you're creating a new rubric based on combining the information from two different rubrics. You know, it's taking these two cross-references and saying these two are very similar to each other, I'm going to take both of them. Uh, and I'm going to show you a way to do that mathematically. That means the medicines only get counted once. So even if a medicine is in both of those rubrics, it only gets counted one time. Uh, and the big advantage of that, of course, is then you don't get your, your analysis overweighed by one particular symptom. Maybe you want to take several rubrics that represent those, that symptom, but only have that symptom counted once out of all the symptoms in your case. So let's look at how to do that. Uh, what I'm going to do first, actually, I'm going to clear my clipboard, get rid of these ones we're playing with before just so you can see clearly the result at the end. So I'm going to take this rubric Mind Fear at Night, but I'm also going to take this rubric Anxiety at Night, and I'm going to ask the program to combine them together, so to count them uh, as, one, as one rubric. Uh, so let's see how to do that. The first thing I want to do, of course, is tell the program which of those cross-references I want to take, because there's four of them here. You know, I could take just one of them, or two of them, or three of them, or all of them, um, whatever combination I want. You know, I've chosen, I'm just going to take Mind Fear at Night plus Anxiety at Night. So the way I'm going to pick Anxiety at Night is on my keyboard, I'm going to hold down the control button. So this is a standard thing on all sorts of computers, uh, where if you want to select multiple things at the same time, you hold down the control button. You're probably familiar with if you're working, say, on the desktop of your computer, and you want to pick multiple icons to you know, delete them to your trash can, something like that, you hold control and click on multiple ones, they get highlighted. It's exactly, exa actually exactly the same, side, um, same thing inside most programs. So I'm going to hold down the control button, and I'm going to click on that first rubric, or first cross-reference here, Anxiety at Night. When I click it, you can see below it's just appeared this little green tick. So there's this little mark here saying I've selected that cross-reference, Anxiety at Night. And now I'm just going to drag and drop that rubric and pop it in my clipboard. You know, or I could have pushed the Take button or done the plus sign, whichever version you normally use. But you'll see here now there's a little 2 underneath my clipboard. So it's actually taken both of those rubrics. Rather than just taking Mind Fear at Night, it's taken Mind for at night and also anxiety at night because I selected both of those. And if I bring up my clipboard now, you can see I've got them here. Mind for at night and mind anxiety at night. 
but the interesting thing when you look across the top here, you can see Calibrom is telling me it's in one rubric with a grading of four. Arsenicum's in one rubric with a grading of three. So even though we can see quite clearly it's in two rubrics here, what the program is actually doing is counting it as if it's in one rubric. So it's saying Calibrom is in one rubric, it's got this little a next to it, both have got a little a next to it, saying it's counting these both as if they're the same rubric. So which means that when I go on and do the rest of my analysis, Calibron doesn't get counted as having an extra symptom just because it was in two rubrics that represented the same symptom. So you might do this as a way of saying you know, maybe your patient's got five symptoms, you want to pick ten rubrics that represent those five symptoms, but you only want to have each symptom counted once. This is a way that you could do that. So I see Calibron is being counted as if it's in one rubric with a grading of four, because it's in either one of these, in this case it's in both of them, and its highest grading is under a fourth grade in the anxiety at night time. You see arsenicum is also being counted as one with a grading of three because that's the highest grading it's got. It's also in the anxiety at night time. If we compare it to aluminium silicata, it's also being counted just as one rubric with a grading of two because it's in either one of these and two is its highest grading. Uh, so hopefully that makes a bit of sense to you. What we've done is created a, a, a combined rubric in a way. It's still showing them separately to us. We can see where the information's come from, but for mathematical purposes, it's counting them as if they're one rubric. It's a really useful way of working with um, multiple rubrics that represent something quite similar and automatically taking those cross-references so rather than going through and taking two or three or six different rubrics that mean something similar, you can take them all at once and the program is going to automatically group them together into a group and just count them as one rubric um, as part of your total analysis. Okay, so let's look at some other examples of combining um, rubrics together, working with multiple rubrics at the same time. We're going to look at how, as if we actually create um, a brand new rubric from them. So I'm going to go back to my repertory just by clicking on the tab button across the top here. And I'm going to look for a couple of rubrics here. Uh, let's, let's look at, say, um, people who are deceitful, people who are dishonest. We want to find a, a range of information about dishonest uh, type medicines. So I know there's a rubric for that, which is mine deceitful. So I'm going to navigate to that by clicking on my binoculars, going to my mind chapter, and I'm going to start typing deceitful. Here it is there. Click enter to go to it. I don't want the sub rubrics, so I'm just going to go and go into my repertory. And I can see here mind deceitful, meaning sly. And there's quite a lot of cross references here. There's a lot of other um, symptoms that mean something similar. So let's say I'm going to take this deceitful symptom and I'll pop that in my clipboard. So I didn't pick any cross-references that time, I've just chosen the rubric itself. But let's go look at some of these cross-references, which one else might I want? I might want the dishonest cross-reference. So let's take that one, and that looks good. I'm going to drag and drop that into my clipboard. Um, liar, that looks good. Let's click on that one. Mind liar, yep, I'll drag and drop that one, pop it into my clipboard. Okay, that's probably enough now that I'm happy with those three rubrics. So if I bring up my clipboard, I've got three rubrics here, deceitful, dishonest, and liar. And so you can see straight away, whenever I do an analysis, if I've got an analysis with you know six or ten rubrics, you know, tarantula, arginate, calcarea, positilla, silica, sulfur, thuya, you know, get uh, really disproportionately advantaged because even though this is just one symptom, I've chosen three rubrics that represent it. So they're probably always going to come up top and I might miss other medicines that actually fit the whole totality of my case. So what I want to do is again combine these ones together, find a way to combine them together. You know, I could have done it um, by taking cross-references the way we did before. Um, but sometimes the rubrics you want are not in cross-references, so I'm going to actually do it a different way, a manual way of combining these all together into a, a new rubric. So let's do that. First I need to select these three rubrics. So again, you want to select multiple things. You can hold that control button down on your keyboard. And I'm going to hold it down and select all three of these rubrics. So I've got mine deceitful, mine dishonest, mine liar. They've all highlighted because I've held down the control button and clicked on each of them in turn to select all of them. And then using my mouse, I'm going to do a right click on them. So I'll do a right click on any one of them, doesn't matter which one. And I get up, comes up a list of options of things that I can do to, to manipulate or change these rubrics in my clipboard. I'm going to choose this option here, combine or group the rubrics. So if I choose combine or group the rubrics, I've got a few options here. Right, so the first one is group them together. This is the same thing that we saw before. I could you know, assign them a letter, maybe letter B because we used letter A last time, and the program will count them all together. Or I can go a step further and say create a new rubric, combining the remedies of the selected rubrics. So I'll click on this one. I've got an opportunity to give it a name. Mine, Deceitful, etc. is the automatic name the program suggested. I'm happy with that. 
I could choose to keep the original rubrics or delete them. I'll leave them deleted. And I've got two options here, combining or crossing. So what combining does is adds all those rubrics up together and creates a new rubric that's got all the medicines from all those rubrics combined in one place. Crossing does something a bit different where it says show me only the rubrics which are in all of these medicines. So if I choose combining, I'll end up with a much bigger, more complete, more comprehensive rubric based on a combination of those symptoms. If I choose crossing, I'll end up with a much smaller, uh, tighter, more defined symptom, just the medicines that have got all of those variations in them. So I'm going to choose the combining one. This is the default and probably the one you use most often. And then I'll push the button combine. So you can see now I'm, in, I'm still on my clipboard, but I've just got one rubric here. Mind, deceitful, etc. It's this new rubric that I've created, 64 medicines. And it's again, does the same thing. It gives the highest grading to each of these medicines. So essentially I've created a new symptom, uh, a new rubric. Um, it's a combination of all these different bits of information from all the different areas or different rubrics around the repertory, which relate to this idea of being dishonest or deceitful, something like that. Let's go back and do that again. And I'll show you the option for crossing. Um, for making them smaller, a, a tighter, more focused uh, uh, symptom. So I'm going to pretend I've got someone who says they're, you know, they're terrified of animals uh, and especially terrified of mice. So I like to think to myself, well, there's two symptoms there. There's fear of animals and fear of mice. So step one is I want to find those two symptoms and pop them in my clipboard. So I'm going to go into my repertory tab. Again, I'm staying inside the mind chapter. So I can click the binoculars. I can click the word mind just here and I'm looking for fears, so I go into the fear section and I'm going to look for animals first, animals of, that looks good, uh, yep that looks good, I don't need a sub rubric so I'll click enter or go to and I'll go to that rubric in my clipboard, so mind, fear, animals of, okay, so I'll drag and drop that, I'm going to pop this one in clipboard number three just to keep them separate so I can show you some things and now I want to look for mind for fear of mice so there's two ways I could do that. You can see it's in the cross-references here. I could just click it in the cross-references to go to it. Uh, or again, I could click on the word fear, bring up my navigation window, and I can just start typing to go to mice. Both of those are options there. So I'll, again, I'll take that one, and I'm going to drag and drop it, and pop it in my clipboard. See, if I bring this clipboard up, so I've got two rubrics here, mind fear of animals with 28 medicines, mind fear of mice with 12 medicines, but there's just four medicines which have got both of those symptoms, calcarea, carcinosin, datmer, and positilla. So if I want to limit my analysis, you know, I want to create a new rubric that's focused on just those four medicines, so I can do that by doing the crossing technique. So it works exactly the same as combining, where first I want to select my rubrics, so using the control button on my keyboard, I click to highlight both of those rubrics, and then I'm going to do a right click, command click with my mouse, and choose to combine or group those rubrics. Okay, and I'm going to choose the option down here, combine. So create a new rubric, combining the remedies of the selected rubrics, same as before, so mind, fear, animals of, etc. I'm still going to delete those original rubrics, I don't want them anymore, but I'm going to change the option this time to keep all the remedies or combining. So keep the common remedies by crossing, and I'm going to choose the option, just click combine now. So what this has done, you can see it's created a new rubric, mind, fear, animals of, etc. It's given it a, a random name, but it's just got those four common medicines, calcarea, carcinosin, natmer, and pulsatilla. So I've got those four rubrics, uh, so four remedies in my rubric for people who have got this fear of animals as well as fear of mice, uh, or particularly fear of mice. So I've created a new rubric, just focus on that more specific, uh, tighter information that I want to focus on there. Okay, so what I might do is just have a look and see if people have got questions about what we've looked at so far. So I'm going to bring the uh, questions window up. Uh, if you have got a question, please pop it in, type it there now, and let's have a look at them together. Okay. Uh, so Carolyn um, is saying she hasn't got a right-click button on a laptop, so it depends on what your laptop is, Carolyn. Most of the touch pads will actually, by clicking on the right side, will be a touch, uh, or there'll be a key on, um, on, on Macs that don't have a right-click. Uh, if you hold down the command button, it's command and click. Uh, so they have command click rather than right-click on a Mac, so you can use either of those options. Uh, just give that a try, let me know if you can see how that works. Uh, Jane says, once you've combined a number of rubrics, uh, can you go back at a later date and remind yourself the original rubrics you used? Um, yeah, so if you've deleted them, you can't do that. Um, let me go back, I'll do that again. I'll show you a way of doing that. So um, let's look at, say, 
I'll take the rubric anxiety at night and I'll pop that and I'll take the rubric uh, fear at night I'm taking what for my cross reference here I'm just going to click on that and fear at night and I'll drag and drop that to my clipboard okay so I've got my my two rubrics mind anxiety at night and mind fear at night so if I want to combine them together I'm going to click con control to select both of those and then I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose the option combine so create a new rubric by combining the remedies of the selected rubric so if I want to go back and see the original details later I can untick this delete the original rubrics and that will keep the original rubrics there for me so when I press combine now you see I actually get three symptoms appear I've got this new rubric I've created just um, remove this table of contents so you can see so mind anxiety night etc with 185 medicines it's all of them here Here's the original rubrics, Mind Anxiety at Night and Mind Fear at Night, because I didn't delete them. But you'll see something interesting that next to them, I can see the number of medicines. I had 165 here, 87 here, I've got 185 for the combined rubric. But next to the, the first two rubrics, it says a zero next to them. And next to number three, it's got a one next to them. And this, this is saying that those first two rubrics are being counted with a grading of zero. So they're actually being counted as if they, uh, they don't have any weight into them. They're not actually being counted in my analysis at all. It's only counting that combined rubric, the mind, anxiety at night, etc. But it's kept the original ones there so you can see them later on. Uh, I've actually made a, a proposition to the, the programmers, which they're looking at doing for the moment, where the, um, the combined rubric will kind of work, I guess, like a clipboard, that the rubrics that make it up are inside it. You can pull them back out again if you want to. Uh, so that's an, an option they're looking at, at the moment. But at the moment, you need to tick the... Um, untick the box to delete if you want to see the original rubrics and see where they've come from. Uh, thanks Chrissy. Um, so, um, Chrissy just said also if you're on a Mac, uh, two fingers together is a click. So if you're using a Mac with a touchpad, two fingers counts as a right click uh, rather than a left click. Okay, so uh, Jane's asking what does it mean to ungroup? Yeah, if you're using the group function, and we did the first one where you've assigned a group, a letter A, so it's, it's doing something very similar. It's Even though it's showing them as if they're still two separate rubrics, it's counting them as if they've been combined together. And then this is that's one way that you could uncombine them later on because they're not actually being combined at all. They're just being combined mathematically rather than actually combined into a, a new rubric. So to ungroup them, we'll just take that letter away so it starts counting them separately again. So if I click un click on ungroup, so it takes it out of that A group. So it's, you can see now Calibrom, it says it's in two rubrics. It's, it's counting them as if they're separate rubrics now rather than similar rubrics. Or I could right click it again, go into group. So I need to pick both. Combine or group them. And add them both back into group A. So you see that little A appears back next to it again, just on the, uh, the left hand side here. So they're back being counted as if they're just one rubric. If I want to remove it from that group, I can say ungroup and take it out of that group. So it you know, adds it in, takes it back out again of, of mathematically combining them as if they're in a group. Yeah, so that's that's good advice, Tanya. So Tan Tanya's suggesting a way that she often does it is she uses a separate clipboard for each symptom. Um, so she may have a symptom in you know, clipboard number one and then another symptom aside to clipboard number two and she puts multiple rubrics in each of those clipboards and then combines them together within that clipboard. That's going to be a way of keeping them separate and, and laid out for you know, the way you want to visually display them. It's actually quite similar to what uh, Herskew does with the, the Herskew analysis module. Uh, the new version of that's not been released for Opus as yet, and the new version that's coming out shortly. Um, it's based on his idea of cycles and segments. So he assigns a, a cycle or a segment or theme to each clipboard and he's got a certain process for that, but essentially mathematically what it means is you're saying which medicine is in the most number of clipboards rather than which medicine is in the most number of rubrics. Um, it's very much based on that um, approach of cycles and segments. Okay, so we've got one extra question. We might just answer one more question, then I'll move on to showing you something separate. Uh, so Sharon, uh, when you take the current rubric, how do you make it go into clipboard three and not clipboard number one? Okay, so there's a couple ways to do that, Sharon. If I go back into the um, repertory, so by default, um, if you're pushing the take button um, or you're typing plus command with a keyboard, it's going to put it into clipboard number one, the default clipboard. So if you want it to go to a different clipboard, you need to say, you know, put it in a different clipboard. 
Of course, that's simple with dragging and dropping. You just drag and drop it to the clipboard that you want to use. If you want to do it a different way with the take commands, you've got a drop down option here. You can say take and specify the options. See if I bring that, it brings up a list with all my options here and I can choose to make it a normal rubric, make it an eliminated rubric, etc. I can add it to a group here. So if I go through and add the rubrics one by one, I can say add this group A, add this group A, add this group A, as I take the individual rubrics. And I could click on the clipboard itself. So I could say in this case, actually, you know what? I want to put this one into clipboard number five. And so now if I push the take button, oh, I've already got it in that one, sorry. <laughs> um, so you get the idea. You can click on the clipboard and pop it into where you want to, want to put it through. Okay. So let's move on to a different section of the repertory then. I want to spend some time on the search window and show you actually a way to do something quite similar, working directly from the mature medical references type books rather than working from a repertory. So there has been a change in the 1.2 version of the program that you've now got access to all the search functions from your toolbar. So just up here in your quick search button, previously you could just do word searches here, now you can do all sorts of searches, the whole um, combination of details is available uh, up here. So if we just do a quick search, for example, if, if say, um, if someone's coming in and uh, let, let's actually, let's do an interesting thing. Let's look at the word, say, tomato. You, know, you see that tomatoes is a big theme in your case, not necessarily just a desire or just an aversion or just a specific symptom, but you see tomatoes are happening all over the place. You want to find all the information that's out there about tomato. So first thing you could do is just type the word tomato. So up here in my search box, I'm going to type the word tomato. Click enter. So this goes through and activates the search, and by default it's going to search all the documents. So it's searching the repertories, the mature medicas, the provings, the journals, the published cases, the whole range of information that's out there, and finding all the information for me about tomato. So you'll see this brings up my search box, and I've got the results here. In this case, the first results are synthesis by default repertory, but then I've got a table of contents with all the other books which have got information about the word tomato in it. So I can see in Bogus, Bonninghouse and Repertory, so tomato aggravates rubric, Kent, that's just the one, desires tomato. I can go to Allen's Mature Medica. Here's a range of information from Allen's. I can go to Douglas's Pearls of Homeopathy. Here's the information from here. So there's a whole range of books, types of information out there, journals, etc. People talking about tomato stuff. Uh, so of course from here, this is really useful to flick through, read about it. You know, I can go and see what information is coming up, people talking about tomatoes and where, etc. But something really useful is I may want to just graph this information. I'll say, you know, I just want to see a visual showing me all the information about medicines that have got something to do with tomato, which, which are our tomato obsessed medicines in the Mature Medica. So to graph that, from this search window, I've got a button just here, like the analysis um, style button, which means to graph it, but it's a search graph. If I click on this button, it's going to go through, extract that information, and it puts it together in a visual graph for me. So you can see up here comes a graph of medicines where there's something about tomato. So it's not saying what type of something, it's not saying it's a desire or an aversion, or it's just saying this medicine's got lots of stuff in it about tomato. So you can see the first medicine, uh, like a purse, um, is actually the medicine that's made from tomato. This is the medicine that's, that is, is tomato. And I've got ferrum, you know, ferrum metallicum has been known for a long time as probably one of the main medicines that have got tomato as a food uh, preference. And then I've got all the other medicines you know, that have got something to do with tomatoes, phosphorus, oxalic acids, stramonium, oleander, carcinosin, etc. I can start to see my Schulten information coming in with all my ferrum salts, you know, ferrum, um, ferrum, I, ferrum, etc. You know, all the range of tomato-y type medicines. So it's a way of graphing that information, saying, you know, I just want to find out in a really broad, uh, less specific type way, which of the medicines have got something to do with tomato. And then I could look at these and say, which ones of these you know, fit the rest of the case, or how do they come up? I could actually go in if I want to and find out the specific information about how this medicine has got to do with tomato. So if I go to stramonium, for example, I might think to myself, well, that's a bit weird. What's stramonium got to do with tomato? I can't remember anything in stramonium having to do with tomatoes. If I click on the bar for stramonium, it's going to take me into, back into my search results and pull out just the specific information about stramonium and tomatoes. So I can see here from Schroens, I've got Generals, Food and Drinks, Tomato Desire. I could go into Hurstu's book on stramonium. So some of these children have got a tendency towards canker sores. So they may have a strong aversion to acidic foods like tomatoes, craving for fruits, etc. Averse to vegetables, especially tomatoes, tomato sauce. Go into the Cyclopedia from Hughes and read his information about that. So I can uh, flick through and read all this information from a range of different sources and say this is why stramonium is coming up into my, into my search for tomatoes. 
uh, there's actually you know, quite a lot of useful ways you can use this function. I'm going to do the exact same thing again, but I'm going to do it from the search window. So before we typed in the word you know, tomato just up in, in my quick search window, I'm going to stay within in my current search here. So I'll just get rid of uh, this and click the eraser. Actually, I can get rid of all of them. Another way of doing it, you know, this is really useful for doing things like tissue affinities. If you get someone come in and say, you know, they've got liver symptoms and you're trying to remind yourself which are the, the liverish, um, the most livery medicines in amateur medica, you could just search for the word liver. So when I do a search here, this brings up all the information from every document, everywhere, ever, um, with everything to do with livers. And then I can graph that. And this is going to give me a graph of which medicines have got the most information about liver. So it's actually, it gives me quite a good comparative bit of information saying how strongly represented these medicines are in livery type symptoms. So I could see, you know, chelidonium here is the strongest, um, followed by phosphorus, lycopodium. Interestingly, then a bit of drop, drop down to NUX. Often we think of NUX as our first liver medicine, but based on the numbers, it's our fourth liver medicine, uh, arsenic, ombrone, etc. And then scrolls down as medicines get less and less references to liver. So if you're looking for organ prescribing tissue for any type information, this is a way that you could do it. You could do a search uh, for the word liver or search for the word, um, you know, a whole range of things. You know, let's, uh, let's do a different one together just to, to show you. I'm going to go back into my search and actually what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a second search. I'm going to do two searches at the same time. I've done a search for liver. I want to add in a search for a different type of tissue. I'm going to search for a pituitary. So I'm going to push this plus button which adds in a second search. And you can see now I've got two tabs. One's my tab with liver. I'm going to search here um, pituitary. So I'm just searching for the word pituitary. Just a simple word search really. But it's going to give me a list of medicines that have got the most references to pituitary. So now if I go from here and I graph this, it's going to go through extracted information on the livery medicines and then also extract the information on the pituitary medicines. So I get coming up to me, you can see I've got two colours, blue for liver, orange for pituitary. Obviously there's lots more information now Mature Medic is about liver symptoms than there is about pituitary symptoms, which you know, is to be expected. Um, but I can see a comparison here of how which medicines have got both these symptoms. And as I scroll through, eventually I'll start to see medicines that have got only one of those. I'll have only one colour. Like here, for example, I'm starting to just have the one colour. Scrolling back through them. Um, but I can see also information about how strong they are with those different areas. So I can see, for example, Nux Pharmaca is very strong as, as a liver medicine, and it's got a little bit of pituitary information. It's quite different to Lachesis, which is, is a bit stronger in both. Lachesis obviously has got a lot more pituitary information than what uh, Nux Pharmaca has got. So you can actually work this way, in a way you can do repertorization and graph your symptoms directly from your mature medicas, your provings, your references, by doing word searches. You know, I've done two very simple searches. Here, just the words pituitary and liver in an, an organ or tissue affinity uh, type way. But if you wanted to, you can get into quite a bit of specifics here. I mean, just um, I'll do that again and I'll show you as an example. So I'm going to go back into my search tab. I'm going to click the eraser button to clear it and get rid of these previous searches. And I may have my client who's got the symptom, you know, fear of dogs. So I'll do that search. And there's also met some menopause stuff happening, so I'll add another search and do menopause. And I could add another search and say, and I think they're tubercular myosin. So tubercular. And I'll do that search as well. So they, these are quite big, broad searches that I'm doing, obviously. You, you can make them quite specific here also. But then I'll graph it. So it's going to go through, extract all the information from all the different books, journals, repertories, provings, the whole range of different types of information that's out there, and then start to graph it proportionally for me. So I can see you know, tuberculinum is obviously hugely tubercular medicine. It's got a, a bit of information about menopause and a reasonable amount here about fear of dogs. That's one of the first options I might consider for a, 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 a menopausal case with someone who I think is tubercular myosin with fear of dogs as a major symptom. You know, calcarea, it's got not as much tubercular stuff, um, but it's much stronger for menopause and it's got a reasonable amount of fear of dog stuff there. You know, phosphorus, similarly, it's got you know, a bit of fear of dog stuff there. Menopause, tubercular is coming through. 
So I'm, I'm seeing first of all the medicines that have got all three of my symptoms and as I move along I'll see the ones with just two and then eventually I'll see the ones with just one symptom. Yeah, so uh, James is asking, from, from this window here, can I search for a specific medicine? Uh, you can, you just by going in the remedy at the top here, and you can type in the name what you're looking for. Uh, so I don't know if it's going to be here, but let's say I was thinking to myself, oh geez, I thought, I was thinking this was going to be a case of Aurum. How come Aurum's not coming up? I can type A-U-R, or click it and it goes through and brings it up for me. So here's Aurum. So I can see Aurum's coming up with my green and my orange, tubercular menopause, but it's not coming up with fear of dog. Uh, actually, sorry, it is, no, it is coming up with your dog, but it's coming up with a tiny little bit that I almost couldn't see, but it is there. Um, so Aurum's coming up here. And again, if I want to go in and see its specific information, I can double click on the bar graph. It takes me into the search and extracts the information about what I've searched for specific to Aurum. So I go through and read about how Aurum fits into those um, particular symptoms from here. And the other way that I often use this is for doing things like prophylactic prescribing. You know, if, often, if I'm looking for what's a, you know, a common generic type medicine for a prophylactic condition, maybe I don't have a nose ode or something like that on hand, I could go into my uh, search window, I'll get the eraser, and get rid of all these previous searches that we've been doing, and I could type in the name of the condition I'm looking for, influenza, and I can graph that, bring up all the information on influenza. do a graph of that. And so this brings up a list of all the you know, influenza uh, references in Materia Medicus for me. And so I can see Eupatorium, you know, Gelsemium, Rustox, Bronia, Arsenicum, Aconite. So it can be useful um, in terms of if you're thinking of therapeutic type prescribing, uh, bringing information up and seeing what things fit a particular condition and how strongly they fit a particular condition because this also gives you proportional uh, sort of information. You can compare it to how strongly it fits other symptoms that the person has got. Um, so you can bring that information up and have a look at it and you know, maybe find out something useful. I also do it sometimes if people come in with some you know, rare condition I've never heard of before just out of curiosity mainly to see if there's any medicines that have been used for it before and if so how commonly they've been used for it. Maybe it's just something I've not heard of before. It's a while to do that graphing, bring it up and have a look at some of that information. So I'm just going to go back, I'll have a look and see if you guys have got any questions about what we've looked at there. Um, if you've got any questions guys type it in now and let's have a look and see if there's anything about this detail I can tell you. Uh, great. Uh, so Sharon says, um, I have only one book come up when I do a search. How do I get all the books up? Right. So the default in the search window, let me just go back to there now, is to bring it up in one book at a time. So you can see here I've searched for influenza and it's brought up the results for um, from Shroin's Synthesis Treasure Edition. It's showing me just the one book here at the moment and then in my table of contents it's showing me all the others. If I want to see them all at one time, there's two ways to do that. Uh, on the right hand side here, uh, there's these two little boxes, view all documents or view the summary. So if I tick view all documents, it does the exact same view I've got now, but it shows me all the documents end to end. So if I tick on that, it's going to go through, pull the results up, and then now I get in my display window the whole lot, all the repertories, the material medicas, the concepts, the whole lot end to end. If I scroll through, it will be in you know, an unending list of everything to do with influenza. If I wanted to, I'll untick that one. The other option, view the summary brings up a short summarised version. This is a document where it's attached to a specific remedy. In this case, obviously, these are rubrics in the repertories. There's no specific remedy. You only get that come up if you're in the Materia Medica. I can see the chapter and I can see the text. This is where the information's come from. So I can scroll down through that and it's a way to quickly scroll through the results. And for a very great big broad search like influenza, you probably wouldn't use this particular function because you more likely use it if you're looking for something quite specific. Um, but it's a way you can scroll through and look at that and um, skip through the information and look at all the documents at the same time. Okay, Sharon's saying, I still have only one book on the left-hand side. The other place you can look at if you're only seeing one document, Sharon, is just look at where you've been searching. So in the top corner, um, I've got mine set to search in all documents. P possibly yours is on search on you know, all open repertories or something like that. It's a smaller, more defined list. If you just change it back to search in all documents, it will go back and search all the whole range of things there. You can do this with a search as well. If I've done the search here for influenza, and I think this is bringing up lots of broad information, I want to take it down to something more specific, I can go in here and say, let's go to just the references or just references of the type. You know, I might want to just go into the therapeutic type books, for example. You know, I can click on just the therapeutics 
it will reactivate that search, do it again, but just focus on what's coming up in my therapeutic style documents so I can narrow it down to something quite specific if I want to. Um, beautiful, you've got it. Okay, great. Um, any other thoughts about that section there, guys? Questions about that? Or ways that you use that even? That's some of the ways that I tend to use it, but there's probably lots of other ways you guys have thought of that I don't use it. No, nope. all quiet? Okay, so what I might do just quickly then, I'll just show you, there is a way that you can also save this search. So if you've done you know, a fairly complicated search or something that you want to come back to later on, um, you can save the search results. Um, you can see in this window you've got a save icon. I can click the save button and it pops up with my um, search files here. I haven't saved any because I don't tend to save searches myself, but other people like to do it. You could even you know, share them, send them to a friend, that kind of stuff. Uh, so I can assign this search a name. Influenza, and just click the Save button. So that saves that search um, there. So if I want to come back to it later on, you know, probably for a simple search like influenza, it's not really worth it. I could just search for that again. But if you've done, you know, a sophisticated search, you've done lots of levels of searching, you've got a whole lot of details that you don't you want to access that search again later, but you don't necessarily want to have to recreate it later. You could just save it and then recall it later on by clicking the Recall the Search button, and go back and click on it to bring it back again next time you're doing that. Okay, uh, so Chrissy's asking, what does the magnifying glass with the red cross mean? So this one just here, it means get rid of the current search. So in, in there's these three buttons here, the eraser, the green cross and the red cross are all about the searches that you've got in the current window. So if I click the eraser button, it's going to clear all the searches that are there. Um, if I do a search again, let's search for say fear of animal, and I'll conduct that search. And then I'll add a second search. So I click the green magnifying glass with the green plus. You see I've got a second tab comes up. And I'll do that search for uh, fear of mice. So now I've got two tabs. I've got a fear of mice tab and I've got a fear of animals tab. Whichever tab I'm currently in, if I click the magnifying glass with the red cross, it will get rid of that tab. Same as if I'd click this cross in the top corner here. Just click it, it will get rid of that and go back to just the one single search again. So if you're working with you know, a whole range of searches, you want to take some out of the mix, get rid of them, um, you can just click that cross to get rid of it and take them out of the equation there. 